I'm continuing getting my boat ready to leave New Zealand and head to Vanuatu. So the next thing that I did was when I took out the fuel tank, I had to uninstall a pump. It's a manual pump that has never worked in all of the years that I've owned my boat. And it's left a gaping hole in the side of my cockpit. And I have two options. Option one, reinstall it. The whole problem is solved. Option two, try to find something to cover the hole and not have a giant ass pump in the way. So I'm going with option two. I mean, what I need is a nice piece of hardwood, like a teak thing or something, to plug the hole. Um, I'm not going to buy a new piece of teak because that's really expensive. And So what I think I'm going to do is some dumpster diving. I know this was the ring around the pump, so I'm going to bring this with me, and if I find something that this fits over, then I know that it'll work. And then the other thing I'm going to do is that I do want to buy an outboard for my dinghy, but I need to make a mount for it on the back. I'm thinking of putting it here. Ping, 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 ping. So I'm going to see if I can find a piece of wood that'll fit in that gap. So I'm just going to take some measurements. Uh, this is my propane bottle that I'm changing out. The regulator's stuck in it right now. And then I have the French Polynesia ones on my boat. So right now I have four propane bottles on my boat. That's full of dirty diesel that needs to be emptied out. I mean, my boat, there's a lot going on that needs to be sort of wrapped up in the next five days. Uh, so I'm trying not to stress about it. Oh, it's time to just tie up all the loose ends, so I'm gonna put on my ring gear, get on the bike, and go play in a dumpster. Okay, I have a mouthful of Tic Tacs. Chugging some coffee before I go. Coffee powered. Oh. Tic Tacs and then coffee is a horrible combination. <clears throat> okay, out we go. Into the world. So Gulf Harbor is pretty fancy, there's a lot of dumpsters to choose from, but I think I'm going to go for one of the ones in the boatyard because it's most likely to have the stuff that I'm looking for. Okay, so I have found Dumpster Alley, there's a ton of dumpsters here, there's a metal scrap one and there's a bunch of wood scrap ones, so I'm just looking through them to see if I can find anything useful. This is actually a pretty good piece of wood. Um, it's not quite big enough to work for this. It overhangs by a tiny bit, but I think I can use it for the shore panel. It's pretty solid. And then I think this one is gonna work for this. This one's not the best quality and it's tapered and kind of weird, but I think it's gonna be okay. And then I can just keep an eye out for something better. The last place I want to look is in this metal scrap one because that one looks very interesting. There's a whole bike in there, a bunch of pieces of metal. Maybe I can find a grill grating for my stove. <laughs> Um, as you guys know, I went foraging in the dumpster the other day and I found a couple good pieces of wood. I wasn't sure what size I was going to need, but I think this one is going to work for me. I think it'll be fine for the dinghy engine mount. So all I need to do is double check that it's wide enough and then measure the length that it's need going to need to be. Now I have these. I have two of these handy little dudes. I've taken... <clears throat> a piece of this board that I found. This is a 
This is actually a New Zealand hardwood from a deck, someone told me. So that's pretty cool. So I don't have to worry about treating it or painting it or anything. It can just sit outside and be fine. Uh, I've drilled these little holes in it to put it around the, the stern pulpit. Now, I thought I had these little stainless U things with threads on the ends. Um, and I thought I'd be able to use them to hold this guy on. But it turns out they're not long enough. So I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way and just lash it on with some sand twine. Uh, I worked on tall ships for a couple years and we lashed everything. So it's given me a lot of confidence in lashings. If you know how to do them right, they aren't gonna fail you. So this is just a more old school style of doing it, but as long as you do it correctly, it will be just as safe as stainless. The only thing is that I need to keep my eye on it for any potential chafing or UV damage, but I've been using this sand twine since I bought my boat four years ago. And there are things that I've lashed down with it that are outside every day that I still haven't had to redo. So I feel pretty confident about this. Okay, it's really cold out here. So I'm putting it uh, <clears throat> on the back here and here are my situations. I really like to sit here when I'm steering, which means that I wanna put the engine over here so that I can still do that. Um, but the problem is that it starts to be curved here. So if I put this guy here, it only has three points of contact. So I have a couple thoughts. One is a wedge and one is this little thing, this rubber doodly doodly do, uh, to try to make it have four points of contact, but I'm not <laughs> taking away my seat because I do like to use that a lot. So I'm just gonna play around with it and see how it fits. I've started this <laughs> project, but I'm starting to get rained on. And so I'm just gonna call it quits for the night, I think. I'm just so, tired of having everything I own be wet that I'm not interested in working in the rain anymore. Anyway, this is what I have so far. Now the problem is that the wood is actually too skinny. The engine won't clamp on to it being that thin, so I'm gonna fi need to find some way to thicken it um, and also make it a little bit more secure, but this is the first iteration. <laughs> It'll be an evolution. Now I'm so today is another cloudy day, but it seems like it's not gonna rain. Uh, so I'm taking the opportunity to do some of my rebedding jobs. I just did one of the vents in the head. It was a little through um, side of the hull fitting that I've rebedded with 4200 and now I'm going up. I'm gonna rebed the Ford at catch. I usually do this once every year or two. There's so many little screws that go through the hatch and the the sealant is constantly degrading here. So I did buy this 4200 Fast Cure UV sealant. I'm not sure if I used a UV one last time, so I'm hoping that this one lasts a little bit longer. But basically what I'm gonna be doing is taking all of these out and uh, just re-bedding them and putting them back together is successfully re-bedded. I also scrubbed the mold off of it when everything was off and it hasn't rained yet. So hopefully I have another hour without rain for the 4200 to just kind of start setting. Project on the list while I have the 4200 out and ready to go is that I uninstall the pump from the cockpit. I think what I'm gonna do is take a piece of metal and try to cut it uh, and then just glue it on. I know the proper way would be to cut out a piece of plywood and put it in and fiberglass it and uh, blah 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 but that is um just you know what it's been raining every day today's the only day that it's going to be dry that i know of so i want to just get moving with this project um i don't know that i have time to do that whole giant thing without it being rainy this is the hole so my original thought was to be a little bit fancier and do a circle and then put that white thing over the top of it but what i've realized is that i can be simpler so what i'm going to do first is put tape on the backs of every single one of these holes, these ones included, and make an epoxy glue and stuff these holes with that so that they're fully sealed off. Um, while that's drying, I'm gonna cut that little rectangle piece that you guys saw and then I'm gonna through bolt it um, through as a plate over this. It's gonna overlap by a ton. I'm gonna use a lot of glue, a lot of 4200, um, and that should create a really nice seal. And then, once that is sealed over the front, I'm going to go in from the back um, and put a ton of sealant around the back of here as well. And then I think that should be good. My epoxy glue. 
everything's taped on the back. Now I'm just going to fill in the holes from the front. Next thing I'm doing is going to do laundry. I did have a glorious amount of sun, which was amazingly perfect, um, but now it's raining a lot on and off. It's also very cold. So I'm <laughs> preparing to go out. Um, I have this ridiculously enormous dry bag. I think it's the perfect thing to do laundry in uh, because <laughs> it's one thing if it gets wet on the way there, but it's another thing if all my dry laundry gets wet on the way back. So <laughs> this is the dry bag. It's just simply ridiculously big <laughs> and it will definitely fit all my laundry and I'm gonna wear full fall weather gear um my fall weather gear leaked really badly uh so on the passage to New Zealand I was putting uh just a yellow slicker over my fall weather jacket and then I tried nick waxing it twice and it just never re-waterproofed so I threw it out because what's the point of carrying fall weather gear on my boat if it's not waterproof oh. instead I bought these pants which are amazing and I have this jacket which is mostly waterproof uh, it has a hood that's better than the yellow plastic one but it's not all the way waterproof so I think on the passage out of New Zealand um, I'm just gonna get a little bit wet <laughs> and I think I'm just gonna have to deal with that for the first three or four days I'm just gonna be cold and wet but uh, that's just kind of how it is once I'm in the tropics I can have this sort of thing and it won't matter if I'm a little bit damp because it's not cold. So anyway, this is my next task of the day, doing laundry. So this bag I'm gonna take on my back on the bike. I'm just so happy to have a bike. Normally uh, doing laundry is even harder or I just do it in a bucket today. Obviously is not a day when I can do that. It's about a 10 minute bike ride into the laundromat with this thing. It's a little heavy, but it's not that long, so it's kind of not the hugest deal in the world. Well, I've got the laundry back. And I'll fold that later. As you can hear, the engine is running, so I'm taking off from here tomorrow, so I just turned it on to make sure that I'd hooked everything up correctly and that I didn't need to bleed it before it started. I'm letting the engine run for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna shut her down. Um, and yeah, there was a, a rough patch. It started up nicely. I think it used all the fuel in the lines and then it sort of hiccuped and I thought it was gonna stop and I was gonna need to bleed it, but it caught itself and now it's running really smoothly. So I'm just gonna let it warm up and get everything going and then shut her off. And then I know that tomorrow I should be good to take off. Uh, some last minute things. I have not finished the mounting rack for the outboard because it's a little more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. The piece of wood that I have is too thin, so I'm gonna have to use two that I connect together and I just ran out of time today. I needed to fill my jerrys with diesel because, you know, no diesel in the tank, no diesel anywhere on my boat. I got rid of all the old Fiji fuel. I only had a couple gallons left anyway and I wanna start fresh with New Zealand fuel because that fuel's been sitting for a long time. And since I just cleaned everything out, I don't want old, bad fuel. So this lovely local man, Rob, drove me to the gas station to get more fuel. And then he also very kindly bought me a couple more things that I need for my boat. One is two-stroke and oil for my two-stroke engine. The other is this cool little measuring cup. I'm sure any of you guys with the two-stroke engine have one of these, but I'd never seen one before because I've never owned an outboard. But it basically is like a measuring cup that also gives you the ratios of how much you need depending on how many liters of gas you have, which is very, very handy. You don't even have to think. Uh, and then he also bought me a block. My main sheet block exploded on the way to Fiji almost a year ago, and I've been using it anyway. It's in pretty bad form, it's in pretty bad shape, uh, and it's actually chafing the main sheet apart. So he bought me a new one because he came onto my boat when he was helping me put the diesel on board and he instantly saw it and he was like, what is happening? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna also gonna replace that. And then, then I'm just tidying up from all my projects, sea stowing the boat, I just filled the water, uh, getting everything ready to leave tomorrow morning and sail, I think up to Fongere, but I'm not sure yet. I'll just see how it goes, what it's like with the wind and the weather and how I'm feeling. Okay, in an exciting new development, the engine won't turn off. So 
I must have bumped one of the connections when I was uninstalling the pump. So I'm gonna have to turn it off by blocking its little air supply. This is why we test these things before we leave. Uh, it's probably just to, at least it turned on, right? At least it's just one wire. So I'm going to put the camera here. All right, I'm going to have to figure out which wire it was that came disconnected. So I have a diagram of it somewhere in here. Here. So these are the wires that should be on it and I'm guessing that one of these is no longer on it so let's see I just put everything in the last and I'm gonna have to take some of it out to get into here I'm guessing it might be this guy what was red there's two reds red one and red two and they both go to here so let me look in there and see if that's one of them all the wires are on unfortunately um not really sure what to do next <laughs> okay unfortunately i can't find what it is so i think i'm just gonna have to shut off the fuel which means i'll have to bleed the engine but that's not the end of the world so the fuel shut off is here Damn, this little bugger holds on for a while. How is this possible? <laughs> it's definitely off. Oh my god. Alright, so the fuel shut off is not working. Um, it's been shut off for seven minutes and nothing's happening, so I'm guessing that just doesn't work. Which is fun and exciting. Uh, so the black wire, according to my diagram, is the stop solenoid and I- Oh my gosh, okay, I have the coolest new piece of information. <laughs> so I called, um, he who shall remain anonymous, my lovely angel of the engine, the guy who helped me with my fuel tank, and I was like, help, I can't get my engine to stop. Uh, and so he told me that- Oh my gosh, I already forget the name of the thing. The injector something. <laughs> Sorry, Matthew. <laughs> um, anyway, I know where it is on my engine. Uh, so basically it's where the fuel line goes into the engine, I'm pretty sure. And it's right here. And he said that all I had to do was to just crack it with a 17 mil wrench, which it was. And as soon as I cracked that, the engine just turned right off. And he said, the coolest thing is that you don't have to bleed the engine at all. Um, so this is an amazing emergency backup thing to use if I can ever not get my engine to stop again. He said that is a problem with books. Um, so it is something that I now am aware of. The problem in this case is that the wire on the stop solenoid came disconnected from wherever it's supposed to be connected to, so my next job is to find where that goes, but now I have this in my back pocket if this ever happens again. So I found what I think might be the connection, but I'm not really sure. The only way I can know is to restart the engine, which I don't feel like doing right now. Um, so I'll do that tomorrow morning when I start it to warm it up for leaving, and uh, if that's not the right one, I don't know what it is but now I have this new trick to stop it and I'll fiddle around with it when I have more time. I still have some things to install on the engine line, like my new sediment filter and um, this really cool magnetic thingy that I'm gonna tell you guys about. Uh, so when I do that, then I'll, I'll mess around and figure out where the black wire is, but for now, it's uh, getting dark and I still have <laughs> a lot of work to do outside, so I'm gonna call it quits and just hope that uh, I found the right spot for the black guy. Okay, the important thing here is to remember the order of all of these squiggles because it can get confusing. So I'm gonna try really hard <laughs> to not mess it up. So this is the old block that I've been using for a year. Um, the hard shackles don't work in this place because there's so much loading on the main, especially when it's slatting. And this hole is too small for me to put the right size shackle in. So what I've realized is that a soft shackle is the way to go, except I ran out of these when the last one broke. So I've just uh, had it tied around here 
to get to this. And I mean, this has seen me all the way to New Zealand. This has seen me through an entire year, but it's, it's not, I mean, it's not great. So this is the new one that I'm going to put into place and I'm going to take this Dyneema and make a soft shackle between here and here just to protect this little guy. This particular repair I did in Polynesia. Um, it was the last time this shackle broke and I didn't have any spare ones and then this happened on the way to Fiji. That's that. And now I'm just going to Dyneema this on. All right, it's all cut and I'm just gonna burn the ends. Wonderful. Thank you for watching this week's video. Stay tuned for the next video when I finally leave the marina that I was staying in and start to sail up the coast towards Opua to get ready to clear out of New Zealand and sail solo to Vanuatu. Um, thank you guys for all of your comments. I love reading them. I am right now, so right now I am in Vanuatu. These videos lag a bit behind, as do any YouTube sailing people's videos. Um, so I am in a place with not great internet, so that's why I'm not being as good at answering comments as I normally am. But I love them. I read them all. They wore my little heart so dearly. Uh, thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting me and making this trip possible. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie. Patrons get snacks on the weeks that I don't do a YouTube video, because I do YouTubes every two weeks, and a lot of those snacks are specific requests to show things that I do on my boat that I maybe don't necessarily show on YouTube. I don't know, a lot of the times, I think anytime you're just existing in your daily life, you don't really think about how what you're doing may be different than what other people are doing. So even something like living alone on my 27-foot boat in the South Pacific, like my daily things that I do, I just don't think about them as being any different than what anyone else does. So then when my patrons ask me questions like, how do you get your dinghy in the water alone? Or how do you up anchor alone? Or how do you provision? Um, it just makes me realize that there's all these different aspects of my life that I can share that I don't even think about sharing. So that is something. <laughs> Also, for one-time donations, I have a PayPal, paypal.me slash windhippie, and it's really thanks to your guys' generous donations that I'm able to continue doing this trip, honestly. Thank you. You're wonderful. In addition of the thank you, thank yous that I'm doing right now, thank you, Tish. <laughs> She helps me get these videos scheduled on YouTube. She reminds me when I need to edit another video. I do these all on my boat right here, a la la, and then try to find some sort of internet situation to upload them to Dropbox, and from there, Tish helps me get them up and scheduled, and um, I don't know. I feel like I am enough of a procrastinator that I need her little reminder texts two days before the video goes up on YouTube where she's like, haha, do you have a video? So, um, yeah, some things never change. Anyway, this is long-winded. Oh, yes, I have merchandise. <laughs> um, there's a link in the description below. I have Windhippie t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, mugs, all these different things, two different designs. I will see you guys. Patrons, I'll see you next week with a snack and my YouTube family. I'll see you guys in two weeks with another full-length episode. Bye!